Hey, this is Jerry from Blitz Studio, and in this part of our Helix Jump mini tutorial series, we're going to set up our camera follow. As the ball falls down the screen, we want our camera to follow as well. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so here we're back in Unity. We have a ball that is bouncing. We have, we've set up some platforms that we can actually bounce on. So there's a few things that we need to look at. One is if I go ahead and rotate around, you can see that now my ball is bouncing just a little bit higher than I want it to. So the problem that we're having is that where the platforms overlap, that edge, it can actually hit the collider twice. So it's hitting one platform and the other, and it's combining the impulse of those multiple times. So what we're gonna do is just simply add a short weight so that it won't do that. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a weight. We're gonna add that towards the end here. And I'm just gonna have this be a small amount of a weight, and we're just gonna make this 0.2. And then we're gonna do a finished event and then go back to de the detect ball hit. So let's go ahead and test this real quick. If I hit play and our ball bounces, if I move now to where those two joints to come together, our ball is no longer going to do that double bounce. Cool, so that's exactly what we want. Now, the other thing that I wanna do is I wanna change from the sky box of the background to a new background. But for us right now, we're just going to take the main camera, go to environment and change from sky box to a solid color. And I have a color in here that is just a darker value of this green. So all I did was just select the green. Then I just took the value range and just went down, okay? So we now have something like that. So it's a little bit darker in the background. That way we're kind of really highlighting the platforms. They pop and we're not dealing with the sky box in the background. Cool, so that's exactly what we need. Now the next thing that we need to do is if I go ahead and turn a couple of these platforms off, let's do that here. So our ball is falling. We're going to the next platform level and then our ball continues to fall. But our camera is not following our ball. What I need to do is set up a trigger that's going to detect if our ball has passed a platform. And what I wanna do is to go ahead and add a new collider. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and use my Pro Builder. I'm gonna add a new shape. We're gonna go ahead and use the pipes again. And I'm gonna simply just do a three by three. Oop, don't want it to be that tall. We just want it to be short again, so uh, we can go 0.1 this time instead of 0.2. And I'm also going to have 12 sides to that, just like our original. And we'll go ahead and take the thickness and make that bigger. So we want to be able to detect our ball. And then I'm going to go ahead and that is good. I'm going to turn the mesh collider off in just a minute. So I wanna just move this into place and because I have our ProGrid, uh, ProGrid on, it snaps directly into place. And I'm gonna move that just below our platform. So it, you can see that it's in our platform right there, but it's slightly below. So it's actually gonna be just a touch smaller than our platform, which is perfect. We can go ahead and now turn the mesh renderer off and we're gonna go ahead and call this our platform trigger. The next thing we also need to do is to make sure that convex is on and is trigger is true. And then we also need to set up a tag for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new tag and we'll just create a new tag of platform trigger. Now I also need to take my platform trigger and add that tag of platform trigger, cool. And now with that set up, I'm gonna take my platform and I wanna update all the rest of my platforms with that. So I'm gonna take my overrides, click apply all, and there we go. So now we have our platform trigger as part of our prefab. Now, if I go to these other ones, they have the platform trigger as well. Cool. So I'm gonna go into my game manager. I'm gonna select my ball and I'm gonna add a new Playmaker FSM. So add new FSM. And with this FSM, we're gonna call this camera follow and in the start state we're going to go ahead and also call this camera follow so how are we going to get our camera to follow our ball well we can easily do this by adding two actions we're going to add a get position action and a set position action so here let's go ahead and go into get position 
We're gonna add that in. And what is the position that we wanna get? Well, we wanna get the position of the ball because that's the game object we're gonna follow. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a specific game object and we're gonna get the position of our ball. We're gonna store that as a Y value because that's the only thing we're checking with our ball. So I'm gonna create a new variable and we'll just call this ball Y position. Okay, so we're getting the position of a ball and we're storing that as ball Y position. We're gonna go ahead and do this every frame. The next thing that we wanna do is to also set the position of our camera based off that ball Y position. So we'll do a, instead of a get position, we're gonna do a set position. So we're gonna set the position of our camera based off of our player Y position. We're gonna set the position of the Y axis of our camera based off of our player position. And we're gonna also do this every frame. So let's go ahead and just give this a play real quick. And now our camera should follow our ball. And so our camera is following the ball and our camera is moving down just a little bit. So I wanna actually move my camera up slightly. And so what we're gonna do is I need to go back to my camera follow. And instead of get position and set position, I need to add in just a little bit of Y to my camera. We're gonna do a float add. We're gonna do a float add. And we're gonna put this, sandwich this right in between the get position and set position. So we're gonna get the position of our ball Y position. And we're just gonna add one. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we set that position as one and that's exactly what we want. Now, I have a problem here. Our camera is continuing to bounce with our player and we don't want that. We only want it to move down as the player moves down and then we want to disable it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my ball bounce where I'm adding the force with my weight. I'm gonna disable this camera, FS, this camera follow FSM. So we only want that to work once we've hit the trigger. So the trigger that's in between these platforms. So let's do this. I'm gonna take this Playmaker FSM. I'm just gonna drag it down into my state. And what I'm gonna do is set a property. We're just gonna choose enabled. And then we're gonna set that value to false. So we're gonna uncheck it. And what that does is just turns this game object off. So we want that to only be on when it's falling through the platform. So we only want that to be activated when our player is falling through the platform, okay? So because it's below the level of our level, it's only gonna, our ball is only gonna be able to trigger that when it's falling through, okay? So we, not, we need to also set up a trigger event for that. So a collision event is when our ball is hitting our platform, but we're gonna do a trigger event to detect when it's going through the platform. So we're gonna do a trigger event and the trigger event that we're gonna do is on our ball. So when our ball, again, has detected a trigger, and this is why we tag our triggers of platform trigger, we're gonna send an event, and we'll send a new event of camera follow. Create a new event, Let's add that transition. And so we're gonna go off to a new state here, activate camera follow. Okay, so we have that activate set up here in our set property. You can easily also do this with enable FSM. So it's another way of accomplishing that. So I'm gonna drag that down. And of the owner, the FSM that we're gonna choose is our camera follow, and I wanna activate it. Here we want to leave our camera as on until we've hit a platform again. So let's go ahead and we have that set up with our collision event. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that collision event, add, it, add that to my camera follow. And I'm gonna add that transition of bounce ball. And I'm gonna go up to my bounce ball, okay? So here we're just detecting either if we've hit a platform or if we've fallen through a platform. If we've fallen through a platform, we're going to our activate camera, which is enabling our camera follow. Then we wait for if our, if our player has actually hit a platform, we're going to bounce ball. And then we're disabling our follow camera. Then we're just going back to detect. 
So let's give this a test real quick. So our camera should only be active once it's falling through a platform. So as my camera follow, falls, there we go. So we're no longer doing the bounce of the camera. We're only doing that as we fall through a platform. So let's try that again. So my camera is staying static until we fall through. Cool, there we go. We now have our camera set up and we are good to go. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and it's something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.